Hello everyone, my name is Oliver Brett, Managing Director of Veritas, and thank you very much for allowing me today to present to you regarding mental health applications and specifically looking at how we can utilise internet and mobile applications effectively in the treatment and prevention of mental health issues. What I am hoping to deliver today through my message is for those of you developing mental health applications, understanding effectively what is going to be most useful for people when they are delivered into the field. And those of you then utilising these applications, so practitioners working directly with clients, which applications are best going to help your clients based on their presentation and based obviously on their clinical needs as well. So a little bit about myself and Veritas to begin with. So Veritas is a group of me uh, mental health psychologically based clinics which support different components of the community. So Veritas works directly with corporates and organisations delivering corporate mental health services. Boxus is our direct to public clinic. So what you'd understand is a traditional clinical psychology clinic. And we have Veritas Legal Psychology as well, which operates in the forensic space as well. Together, the group has over 30 years of continuous experience in the field, delivering strategies and interventions for, uh, as I mentioned, different people within the community. Uh, and overall, at the moment, we support around 400,000 lives annually across the globe. My role at Veritas is Managing Director, uh, so I'm helping lead the delivery of these programs to those that need it, our community, our clients, and also the growth of the organisation as well. My history and experience is as a 10-year um, uh, industry participant, as a psychologist, having studied at the University of South Australia and then completed my master's at the University of Wollongong as well. So it's long been known that mental health applications, internet um, applications have got a good use and are growing in considerable popularity. So as of 2015, the World Health Organization identified that there are over 15,000 mental health applications already available to public and had been developed. And as this number grows, and it would be significantly above that number now today in 2022, um, it is becoming a growing way in which people are accessing support and or uh, a more common for clinicians to be using this type of support with their clients as well. The fundamental benefits that mental health applications provide is it provides greater accessibility because it untethers the amount of support available within a community to the amount of clinicians available. So more people are able to access. It can provide greater affordability for people accessing mental health support as well because they can access more support or more frequent support without needing to have the outlay of cost uh, and people's insurance may only cover a certain amount of sessions with the clinician. So the use of a mental health based application can obviously boost the amount of support that person is engaging with. And then engagement as well. Mental health applications allow a private avenue for people to understand their mental health better. And obviously the interaction with mobile phones is very, very popular within most societies across the globe now. So having your mental health support also digitized is speaking to the language, particularly of the younger generations as well. The challenge we have though, is that over these 15,000 mental health applications, which were available in 2015, not a lot of them had any real stringent um, studies placed on them to look at their efficacy in regards to the level of impact in which they were having for the people that were utilizing them. So were they actually helping to reduce symptoms and reduce distress as well uh, for people? And that was unclear. Not many applications go through a rigorous testing process before being launched into the public. There are many different ways to categorize applications, but I in particular wanted to discuss with you today the difference between self-led applications and clinician-led applications as well. Um, so self-led applications are those which individuals can engage with independently without the guidance of the clinician. Um, and they this allows the individual to choose which content they engage with, select which content they think is relevant and engage with it in a frequency that they determine themselves. 
a clinician led ap um, application is one that actually is more guided by the clinician as opposed to the client directly. The clinician can determine and control what content the individual engages with and can monitor the individual's engagement as well to see the uh, impact it is having and help it to inform treatment as well. So this is the distinguishing factor I wanted to discuss today. Um, and I feel it's a really important one for both those developing applications to understand and clinicians to understand as well when they're uh, prescribing or utilizing an application in their treatment with an individual as well, to keep in mind as to how you're designing and how you're delivering it. So fundamentally what we know from the research is there is not a lot out there that uh, supports self-led applications in being effective in reducing symptoms to a subclinical level. There is some data out there highlighting that these applications do help reduce some symptom symptoms, but not to a level that you would describe as being subclinical. Clinician-led applications, on the other hand, there is far more evidence suggesting that these applications can help with reducing, in particular, the symptoms of depression, anxiety, in, and insomnia, as well as PTSD. And there is more emerging evidence that it can also assist in addressing the behavioural symptoms of psychosis or schizophrenia as well. So by no means am I saying that there's evidence out there that's saying um, internet-based or mobile applications uh, can sort of, for lack of a better word, cure um, psychosis or schizophrenia or replace the need for medical uh, intervention for these disorders, but it can certainly assist the behavioural symptoms of these issues. Well, sorry, I shouldn't say certainly, but there is mer emerging evidence that suggests that there could be a good impact of these applications on supporting these disorders as well. So what does this mean when we are then implementing these applications into our treatment or into our, uh, as clinicians? My belief is that both play a role, but we need to be very wise in which ones we're using and when. Self-led IC is having a really good um, application in, or use, sorry, in the preventions of issues emerging, the management of subclinical issues as well. So when someone is maybe experiencing an in the moment stress, heightened state of stress or worry, a self-led application can provide quick, easy to access support for that individual to reduce subclinical symptoms. It's also a good way of people tracking and data capturing their mental health as well. So helping them to determine whether or not they maybe need support or how they are tracking. And also for positive psychology-esque interaction. So more when you're looking to support someone or someone is looking to thrive rather than simply recover as well. So rather than someone being in a state of needing for recovery, they are looking to enhance into a state of thriving. That is where a self-led application can be really benefit beneficial because it allows quicker access to these rather than waiting for a clinician. And globally, there's a lot of issues with people getting in front of a psychologist quickly at the moment. It can help manage subclinical issues early on before they may become clinical. Another very valuable um, um, part of the mental health treatment plan uh, or process, I believe. And then on the clinician, this is really where it's uh, really useful for, for supplementing treatment. I see that, and what I've seen in my work is that uh, applications, mobile internet applications can really help to boost the amount of treatment that someone is receiving without boosting the amount of sessions or not, or frequency of interactions they're having with their clinician. It can really help to lower the symptoms uh, or distress someone is feeling to a subclinical level. Used in these manners, I can see that internet and mobile applications can really benefit the community. Um, so those that need support, clinicians, and also health systems as well. So self-led, I believe, in, uh, can really help health systems to reduce the burden of mental health on their communities and also reduce the cost of mental health um, on their bottom line because it is able to prevent issues and then also help pe keep people stay safe. When we developed our own application, which is called Strong, we really looked at clinician-led model, which looked at Netflix. For, uh, it is a Netflix for clinicians. And we designed it to incorporate some other key st uh, statistics or, or evidence that shows that how mental health applications support and can be truly effective and proven to be effective. We based our application on having high engagement with clients. So clients were utilizing it multiple times a week. We kept it to being clinician-led. We made sure that it was trans-diagnostic um, in, in its capabilities. 
So one of the big uh, issues with mental health um, applications at the moment is that it doesn't allow for comorbid issues to be addressed. So you may use an application that only looks at uh, overcoming depression, but won't do anything for any comorbid anxiety. Because clinicians are able to develop their own treatment plans through our application, it, can, it has transdiagnostic capabilities. And of course, from a design perspective, we wanted to make sure that it was really simple for users to use as well. So thank you for listening. I know that we only scratched the surface today, but I say I ask that you all deeply consider when you're either developing an application or using an application, whether or not it is you are trying to help someone that is best served through a non-clinician based application or a clinician led application because they have real big differences in regards to what use they have and how, um, how much efficacy there will be in their impact for your clients as well. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.